hi again, everyone. Jack Curran here welcoming you to another session of Grand Prix Wrestling. All the excitement gets underway in just a moment. Jack Britton will be along with me, and Emil Dupre will be dropping by to chat with us. He'll also be involved in a tag team match against the UFO. He'll be teamed up with Andre Pelche, a newcomer from Quebec, and uh, Tarzan, the boot Tyler, and the UFO will be taking them on. And for the first time ever on Grand Prix Wrestling, we're going to have that arm wrestling challenge between Roy Callender from Barbados, the former Mr. Universe, and Michel Pelletier from Joliet, Quebec. We're going to have that as a feature on this program. We've got a three against three for our final match today. Lots of excitement coming your way. Get set for it. We'll be back after these messages. Mesdames, Mesdemoiselles, Messieurs, le premier combat. Ladies and gentlemen, the first match, one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Une chute limitée à 10 minutes. First, en premier lieu, du lac Saint-Jean dans le Québec, from Lake Saint-Jean, Quebec, Weighing 273 pounds at 273 livres. Here he is, le voici, Gilles de Fiche Poisson. He is son adversaire and his opponent today from Italy, d'Italie at 230 livres. Weighing 230 pounds. Il est là, there he is, Dino Bravo. And the referee, l'arbitre, Luigi Marcella. Well, here we are at ringside once again. Jack Britton is here with me and Emil Dupre. And uh, I was just thinking, Jack, before I get to talk to Emil, uh, what with the championship match coming up next week in Verdun between Dino and Gino against Jill the Fish Poisson and Tarzan Tyler, I'm just wondering if Dino isn't making a mistake in taking on this TV match. Well, actually, I don't think it's Dino's fault. It's the promoters who have matched him on... Uh the air, you know, on TV. Of course, uh, I think this is a prelude, and it should be good for Dino. It'll uh, make him study his opponent, and maybe it'll be easier for the Italian connection to defeat Wesso and Tyler. Well, we'll see how it turns out. In the meantime, Emil, I know you've got a match coming up after this one on the show, so you're going to be busy from there on, but I did want to I thank you for coming back this week. And I want you to fill us in on the situation in the Maritimes. I was supposed to get down there last summer, and unfortunately, I just couldn't make it. But I hear you had a great season. Yes, it was. We all we had all the big stars of Grand Prix. Uh, Eduardo Caponte, Don Leo, Jonathan, and uh, a whole, whole uh, score of others that showed up in the Maritimes. I would like to say right now that uh, the Italians, uh, Bravo and uh, Brito, they will be making an appearance in the Maritime in the very near future, in the spring. And also, uh, Tarzan Tyler is supposed to be making an appearance, and uh, a whole bunch of others. Don Leo Jonathan is supposed to uh, come back to the Maritime, and uh, also a very proper Sweet Daddy Siki and the whole tour of others. Uh, well, I understand that that's uh, Don Leo Jonathan's favorite part of the country anyway, or it seems to be. Yes, he has been uh, coming to the Maritime, and I think he enjoys it uh, very much. And uh, naturally, uh, wherever he appears, is uh, full to the capacity. And, uh, it's the same thing like uh, Edouard Carpentier, is very, very popular in the Maritime. And they love Grand Prix wrestling because it is, in itself, one of the greatest programs. Uh, wrestling, uh, Russian program that, ever, that I ever seen. Listen, Emil, I don't want to, I wouldn't, uh, you know, get too personal on the air, but I have a personal question for you. I'm not going to ask you your age or anything, but I happen to know that, uh, and I mentioned this last week when we were discussing how long you've been around, you were just a kid of uh, around 17 or so when you first made the big time in Montreal in the old days at the Forum, but I understand you wrestled Bobby Manigoff in his very last professional bout. That's right, that's correct. Uh, Bobby Manigoff, in my book, was one of the greatest wrestlers, uh, one time a world champion. And in, in, uh, in this uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, I wrestled Bobby Manigoff, and he injured his, uh, his knee. And at that time, uh, he never wrestled after that because uh, it was a dislocated knee, and it never did get any better. Well, I think something's about to happen over here. Luigi Marchera has just been knocked out. And uh, young Dino Bravo had Gilles the Fish Poisson in the airplane spin. And I thought he might have him on that. But I'm afraid that something happened over in that corner. And Gilles the Fish Poisson, I don't know whether Tarzan Tyler interfered or not. But anyway, Gilles the Fish Poisson ends up the winner. And thank you, Emil. Good luck in your bout coming up. Right.
Well, March the 11th is a big night in the world of wrestling at the Forum here in Montreal. Rougeau goes against Don Leo Jonathan. It is not a title match, but somebody is going to have a crack at taking your title away, and they say that pound for pound, Rougeau is the man who eventually could challenge you for it. Yes, that's true, Ron, and uh, he, he is tough. The last match he did prove to be tough, but I tried to come out and fight him in his own way. I tried his, uh, his way, his back street brawls in the alley, the type of fighting. I tried to just go in and match him punch for punch, and I would like to say this. He is very strong, and he takes a lot of punishment. So I think that what I'll have to do is just wrestle him and give him a good wrestling match, mm -hmm. give him a good wrestling lesson. And as you know, Ron, this match is going to start at 9.30, so there will be no way that he can slip out under the curfew like he did last time. Yes, because in your first set, too, it went to curfew time, and that was the end of the match, period. Yes, that was the end of the match. But he wanted a rematch. He thinks he can beat me, and I just signed an open contract. Anything that he wants, I would be glad to oblige him. After all, I am the world's champion, and I back down from no one. I'll take them all, but I give no quarter, nor do I ask anyone. One thing to remember with a few seconds left is, with your vast experience, you are known in the trade as one of the most adaptable types. If a fellow wants it scientific, he's going to get it fast. He's going to see a lot of your spring-ups and a few things. But if he wants it tough, you've got 305 pounds to throw at him. And I'll throw every one at him, too. <laughs> Don Leo Jonathan, thank you very much. And it's going to be some match with Rougeau and Big Don Leo on the 11th at the Forum. I would suggest get your tickets nice and early. Yeah, I would, too. Of course, that's uh, Don Leo Jonathan at his training camp out in Vancouver talking with Ron Morier. But don't worry, he'll be here in Montreal on March the 11th for that big title fight with Jacques Rougeau. Mesdames, Mesdemoiselles, Messieurs, Ladies and gentlemen, the second match, le deuxième combat, une chute limitée à 10 minutes, one fall with a 10 minute time limit. C'est un combat équipe et tag team match. First, tout d'abord, from parts unknown, sans adresse, à 239 livres, weighing 239 pounds, le voici, here he is, the UFO! He is son partner and his partner, the Miami Beach in Florida, at 270 livres, from Miami Beach, Florida, weighing 270 pounds, Tarzan Tyler. He loves adversaires, their opponents, the Moncton, the New Brunswick, at 238 livres, from Moncton, New Brunswick, weighing 238 pounds, Emile Duplé. He is son partner and his partner, the Saint Anne de la Pocatière, dans le Québec, from Saint Anne de la Pocatière, province of Quebec, weighing 232 pounds at 232 livres, André Pelletier. L'arbitre, the referee, Luigi Marcella. Well, there's sure some kind of a rigmarole going on up there in the ring, and there was a rigmarole at the end of the last one. Jack, you were watching that last thing. What happened? What exactly happened was that, again, Tyler got a hold of Dino's foot while he was giving Wes on the airplane spin and uh, made him lose the fall. And Gino apparently is very mad at this, and he would like to meet What's on her title right now? And this is a prelude of what maybe is in the future to be seen. He's really mad. Well, you well, saw that... Now they've changed Pelchier for him. Well, suddenly, uh, the young gentleman, uh, the newcomer, Andre Pelchier, isn't in there because Gino Brito wanted a piece of this action. He was mad from what happened to Dino Bravo. Well, we've got wrestlers everywhere. Well, Gino ought to know better than to give Tarzan Tyler some time like that. And he's on his knees begging, he's recovering. Well, I think he's waiting for him now. He's very cautious. This might turn out to be a boxing match. Well, it might be a brawl after all, a street fight. I'm not going to give him any chance. He's a little mad and he's using the same tactics 
that Poisson and Tyler are using. UFO is trying to get into it, so is Gilles the Fish Poisson. Well, the tag was not made. Luigi saw that. In the meantime, Gino Brito and Emil Zubre are taking care of Tarzan Tyler in their own way in the corner. There's a straight. Well, UFO uh, was asked to kindly leave. Well, I've never seen my son this mad before. I think he's really mad. Now he's tagging with Emil Dupre, and I think that being uh, two people of, with enough experience, I think they can handle these two. Well, right now, UFO and Emil are in there, and I think Gino's gonna step out. And Tarzan Tyler has certainly gone to the corner to uh, catch his breath. But uh, Emil and Gino are ready for bear. Realize, of course, that, uh, oh boy, he gives him that big foot rub on the head. Well, you can see it all happening. They're working away at that mask. It's out of mayhem. I don't know, Emil's got that mask half off now, hasn't he? Well, I'll tell you, Tarzan Tyler went for something in his belt, put it back right away. I think it was handed to him by Gilles Poisson on the floor. Here he comes. And he flips him. Now he's going for the legs and the pressure. Now he gets him into that Indian uh, death lock. But not too many ways out of this. He's got him pretty well tied up there, Jack. That's the figure four hole. That's the Indian death lock. It's a figure four, actually. He didn't quite have the uh, Indian death lock on him. He had no, the, it's a figure four. the figure it's four. A because uh, even right. if he had had it on, even with Tarzan interfering, I don't think it would have broken up quite that easily. It wasn't applied completely. He's working on the inner thigh with the, and he's going right back at it again. There it is again. And there's Tarzan Tyler again. I wonder what he's got in his hand. It's a metal uh, wrist, look, I think. Look, look, you can see it right now, Jack. It I, looks I, like I, a... I think Jill Poisson handed to him. I, I think it's a piece of iron or something. And the referee, Luigi Macera, didn't have time to see it. He didn't catch him in the act anyway. Looks like some kind of a piece of metal. He still got it there, too. He didn't even bother putting it away that time. Now what? He says, oh, do it to me. Be funny if he did, wouldn't it? There's the step over toe hole. Of course, with the size of the hands that the Tarzan Tyler has, he could hide anything in there. And the size of the feet, too. He's obviously got that loaded boot going. For oh, he cut him. He cut him right across the forehead. Well, this bout has just been one line of continuous action. Poisson is now in the ring, which would lead me to believe that Luigi would have to disqualify them. I don't think he has any choice. There it is. He's disqualifying Tarzan Tyler and UFO, and here's Dino Bravo. And here comes Johnny War Eagle. The 
meantime, Porgino Brito is lying on the floor. His face is a mass of blood. And I'll tell you, all hell is broken loose. Gino Brito! Behind me is a photograph uh, from February the 12th at the Montreal Forum. And Eddie Creechman, before I, while I have a chance to say a word or two here, it would seem to me that from the position of Jacques Rougeau and the position of Don Leo Jonathan in that picture behind us, that uh, it wasn't all Jacques Rougeau, going all Jacques you know, Rougeau's way before the... I think you're an instigator. The, uh, I think you're an instigator from Grand Prix Wrestling. No, no, I'm I just think like you're like the truth, rest of them. All. I just feel like blowing you down, too. Now listen, I got something to tell you and everybody else here that's watching me right now. I'm the greatest manager of them all. This was a frame up from Grand Prix. Jacques Rougeau had the best of this, Jonathan, but I'm not interested in that match. What interests me is your Frenchman, your big idol, Edouard Carpentier, who is going to wrestle my Sheik, the real man in wrestling, the noble Sheik. He will tear you apart, Carpentier. He will tear you into little shreds. I have opened the stable of all my doors. Everybody is coming in from me. Pompero Frippo, Killer Brooks, Torquemada, name them. I got a big stable of them all. Now, Grand Prix wrestlers, you must be happy. You must be very happy that you're going to wrestle big, popular names. Not just thinking of little fish, poisson, whatever you call him. He's just a fish. Tarzan Boot Tyler, that other jerk, whatever you want to call him. Now you're going to wrestle men. You open up wrestling magazines and you read of the greatest wrestlers of them all. They're coming to you March the 11th in the Montreal Forum. But Carpentier, you got the biggest one. And you got the little weasel right here that you got to watch because I got something up my sleeve that's going to send you on a big trip all the way back where you come from. March the 11th, the Montreal Forum. Don't forget it. I need money. Be there. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames, mesdemoiselles, messieurs, the troisième combat, the third match, one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Une chute limitée à 10 minutes. First, en premier lieu, from parts unknown, adresse inconnu, à 243 livres, weighing 243 pounds, the destroyer. Et son adversaire, his opponent today, from Montreal, de Montréal, à 228 livres, weighing 228 pounds. Everybody knows him, tout le monde le connaît, Edouard Carpentier. And the referee, l'arbitre, Luigi Marcella. Well, I don't know whether we get this sorted out yet or not, but somehow or other, it's just seemed to have been madness from beginning to end here. This on the surface would seem to be a bit of a mismatch with... Uh, the destroyer in there against uh, Edouard Carpentier. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. I did want to clear one thing up since uh, there was so much blood in the ring a while ago, and I'm sure you didn't like to see that, uh, particularly since you're kind of uh, closely connected with Gino Brito Jack. But I did want to clear up one thing. We mentioned the Grand Prix Blood Donor Clinic. It's a big one uh, next Thursday. That's right, and it will take place in the gym of Grand Prix, which is situated on Berry Street, right opposite the bus terminal. Just go down to the show mart next show Thursday, mart, the right. 7th of March, and uh, all the Grand Prix wrestlers will be there. It'll be a big, big blood donor clinic for the Red Cross, and uh, it'll be a chance for you to get to meet all the wrestlers and at the same time give the gift of life. That's right, because all wrestlers all give uh, blood, especially like even my son Gino Dino, they got their... Uh, the Red Cross on them because, you know, they're donors, quite regular of blood. Well, let's see. Uh, the destroyer seems to be uh, handling himself all right so far, kicking away and pounding away at Edouard Carpentier. But we've, oh, I was just about to say, we've seen Edouard turn the tables before, and he did. Here we go. Watch the somersault. Edward Carpentier is a polished wrestler. He knows all the moves. He's got a lot of stamina. And I don't believe that Destroyer is a match, really, for Carpentier. Of course, they only got a 10-minute bout. It might not be enough. 
One, oh, two, my God. and he's got him. Got him. Now he says he's going to take off the mask. The victory for Edward. He's got I'm it. He's got it. And look who's there. Frenchie Martin. Is that Frenchie Martin? Frenchie Martin. It's Frenchie That's Martin. Right. Who would have believed it? Frenchie Martin. I think in all the years I've seen wrestling, I've never seen a wrestler unmasked before. And not this fast. He really was had his heart set on it to find out who the destroyer was. Well, Frenchie Martin. He falls. He sits there. He falls to the Lamarcus. To be easy. Well, I have to apologize to you wrestling fans. Last week on this program, I said that Gilles the Fish Poisson and Tarzan Tyler would be wrestling the Italian connection, Gino Brito and Dino Bravo, uh, last week at uh, Verdun. Now, it didn't happen. What, what happened, uh, Well, Gino? unfortunately for us, Carbon here asked us if we'd forfeit that match because he and Yvonne Robert wanted to take him on. We said, go ahead. Maybe you'll soften him up a little. Because, but now... Tyler, you've been screaming and bragging what you're going to do to the Italians. There's your chance to prove it. Remember what we did about three weeks ago against you and the UFO? We had you all over the place. We beat you in two straight falls. So we're, we are doing you a favor by giving you a chance at that belt. Yeah, let's talk about that belt. They said that you guys would not put it up, that you were afraid of them, that, that there's no way you'd put the belt up. But you're going, you're going to let them have a shot at the belt, aren't you, Dino? Listen, they tried out with UFO. It didn't work out for someone to interfere. Now he chose his own partner, and we'll put the belt, the belt on the line any time we get this team. Now, look, no matter what you think of them as men or anything else, that's quite a wrestling team. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Jack. I, we don't take nobody lightly. We're not going to take a guy like the fish poisson that can pick up 500 pounds like, like I'll pick up 10 pounds and a man like, with the experience of Tyler. We're not in there with kids. We're going to have to fight hard, but since we've had that belt, we promised the people we would fight to the end. And we're going to keep that belt because we don't want to give it up right away because now the money's coming in. And we like money, too. Let's face it. We're in pro sports to make money. And Tyler, I don't care how much blood you can get out of us, we'll fight till the last drop comes out. Well, there's only one place to be in sports, and that's on the top, that, isn't there? That's right. That's on the top, and that's where we want to stay. Well, right I'd... now we're in our prime, and we're going to stay there maybe for, I don't, who knows, two, three years. But we want to stay there, and it's not a man like Tyler or Poisson that's going to scare us. I know we're going to have our hands full, but like I said before, we're going to fight and come and get the belt if you can. Next Tuesday night in Verdun. Un spécial Grand Prix de tir au poignet. Et voici les adversaires. Tout d'abord, de Joliette à 232 livres, Michel Pelletier. Son adversaire de la Barbade, Monsieur Univers, à 230 livres, Roy Callender. Les arbitres, Jerry Petel et Luigi Marcella. Well, uh, there you see the $1,000. This is the challenge for the $1,000. Tony is holding it. It's Michel Pelletier, Roy Callender here, limbering up. It's an arm wrestling, 10-minute time limit. The referees are Jerry Patel and Luigi Marchera. So anytime you're ready, gentlemen, let's get this match underway. They want a little warm-up time just to get unlimbered. Jerry Patel will be the timekeeper on this as well as uh, the regular timekeeper. How's the arm, Roy? Okay? Ooh, a bit slow, but it should be okay. 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 <laughs> The rules. Attendez, ce sont des cloches. Quand la cloche sonne, vous partez. Le premier qui touche à la table est partant. OK, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, All right, come on. Who is the first one touching the table? Please? Right, exactly. Uh -huh. It must be a complete touch. There must be no 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 grabbing into the table. It's strictly okay. one arm against the other. Go. There's the bell, they're off.
Both of the referees watching this very carefully now. Do they have to keep the other hands uh, locked together? The two hands must be locked at all times. The one who breaks the grip first is disqualified, and the other man is declared the winner. Both the, feet have to touch the ground. Both feet on the floor. Uh, the wrist must not break. What about twisting? That's all right. You, you may twist the body, yes, but the elbows and the arms, the left arms, must stay on the table at all times whatsoever. They cannot lift the elbow off the table. This right now is a matter of endurance. I believe that the men are of equal strength. But now we'll see which man has the endurance. But this is tough on the system, believe me. Have you uh, ever indulged in this sort of no, thing? No, I'm not good enough, Jack, no. This young yeah. Michel Pelche is good, though. He's fantastic. R Roy Callender is one of the strongest men in the world. Uh, but uh, Pelche, as of now, is still an unknown. But so far, in wrist-pulling contests, he's undefeated. And he's won the Canadian champion, uh, excuse me, the Quebec championship so far. No one's ever beaten him. But against a man of Roy Callender's caliber, uh, this is going to be a great test for him. I believe that Roy Callender is one of the strongest men he's ever met in his life. Do you think they can last 10 minutes? Ah, that's tough. That's real tough. You're just, you're, probably right now, those men, if they last three or four minutes, those men will probably lose about two pounds apiece. Just it's, that, it's that right. strenuous. Right. Yeah. Right. I can believe that. And the, heart, the heart is pumping double right now. Right now, Calder's almost got him. Calder's almost got him. One of the world's strongest men. The Alden has him right now. Pelche has been undefeated. Here he comes Never back. Been beat. He's coming back now. Unbelievable. To come back on one of the world's strongest men. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Fantastic. Look, look. He's got him. He's got him. Listen. Wow. Pelche. That's it's incredible, sad. Luigi. That's One of the world's strongest it. men, That's Roy Callender. It's unbelievable. He almost had him, and then he turned defeat into victory. He was a half inch away from winning. Fantastic. And $1,000, Jack. And $1,000. Oh, <laughs> that hurts. Roy, Roy, congratulations. It was a really good match. Very I know He's a very know. strong man. Michel, yeah, like felicitations. You'd like a rematch? Yeah, like, we'll see what we can do about that. Okay. Yeah, I want another match. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. Mesdames, Mesdemoiselles, Messieurs, Ladies and Gentlemen, the television main event, le combat principal de la télévision, un trois contre trois, three against three. First, en premier lieu, du Japon, from Japan, 231 pounds, 231 livres, Tokyo Joe. Et de Belgique, à 246 livres, from Belgium, weighing 246 pounds, Lelonix Le Gaulois. Also from Belgium, également de Belgique, à 243 livres, weighing 243 pounds, Patonix Le Gaulois. Leurs adversaires, their opponents, d'Oklahoma, from Oklahoma, weighing 220 pounds, à 220 livres, Il est là, there he is, War Eagle! Un de ses partenaires, one of his partners, from Drummondville, Quebec, 301 pounds, de Drummondville dans le Québec à 301 livres, Serge Dumont! Et de la Martinique, from Martinique, weighing 238 pounds à 238 livres, c'est lui, Datsim, Edouard Etifier! And the referee, Lalbit Luigi Marcella. Well, we're back at ringside. Sorry to leave you there for a while, Jack, but uh, we wanted to be close to the action on that arm wrestling. And that was something, I'll tell you. I've never seen that outside of wide world of sports. Well, like I told you before, I was uh, really surprised to see Calendar really put up uh, a tough fight to Pelche, although Pelche maybe has got more experience at arm wrestling. And uh, the best man won, I guess. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Calendar was within a half an inch of winning it. 
And it'd be interesting to see Pelcia meet some other opponents because this could build up into quite a, a following, you know, because there's a lot of arm re wrestling people in the province of Quebec. Roy says he wants to meet him again, and I guess it's because Roy hasn't done too much of that arm That's wrestling. Right. And I think every time you go in there, you you learn a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got to change. Boy, have we got to change. Tag. Three. three against three, and they've got something, or they had something in the nature of 17 minutes. So it's a TV time limit bout, and uh, anything can happen in 17 minutes because uh, you've got some mighty fine, good wrestlers in there. These two, for instance, in the center of the ring, Edouard Etzifier and Tokyo Joe, two of the finest physical specimens around, tremendous conditioning and tremendous know-how. The agility of Tokyo Joe is phenomenal. Too bad that he doesn't weigh 20 pounds more. He'd be one of the top, top wrestlers in the province right now. Well, you know, we're not too far away from the big bout at the Forum on the 11th, and uh, we haven't mentioned it yet today because we just haven't had time. Maybe we should talk a little bit about that right now. All right, to the people who are watching, the main event will be between Jacques Rougeau, uh, return against Don Leo Jonathan, of course, you remember last time the curfew put an all to that bout. This time there will be no curfew, so the best man should win. Then, of course, you've got the other bout that everybody is anxious to see, which the Sheet versus Edward Carpentier. Been a lot of discussion about that one, which one is the better man. The Sheik, of course, is uh, just about as famous as Carpentier and uh, is a very, very successful wrestler out of the Detroit area. Uh, very big, he's the biggest attraction in the last few years. He's been all over and he's come out with success all the time. And as you know, now even uh, Creechman is gonna be his manager or is his manager. And uh, the two of them make a very hard pair to beat. I don't know how Carpaccio is gonna do against them, and it takes a lot of nerve, you know, and courage, but I bet on Carpentier. Well, I was saying that off reputation, I don't know about those two bouts, Donnell Jonathan and Jacques Rougeau and Carpentier and the Sheik, I won't speculate on those, but I would have to say off reputation that Tarzan Tyler has pretty good chance against this newcomer, Ray Glenn. Absolutely. And I would certainly, if I were a wagering man, bet on Poisson against uh, Tim Cockley, but I'm, I don't really know him. And I'd have to go for Dino and Gino against Neil Gay and Freddie Sweetan. Don't ask me about that. You uh, know where I I mean, Sweetan's a good man, no question about it, but we know how good Dino and Gino are. That's right. Okay. Uh, they're uh, good, but I think that the Italian connection is better. And I'll tell you another thing. I'll go for War Eagle over Pampero Firpo. I don't care how good he is. I know how good War Eagle is. Okay. I know. Uh, that, down, the rest of them, I'd say pick them. But it's quite a night of wrestling, just when you see a full sheet like that with every big name in the business there. Well, I'll tell you, on the 11th of March at the Forum, there are more outstanding wrestlers on that card than I've seen even at the Madison Square Garden in New York. No question about it. Uh, any one of the top three matches could be a headliner in Chicago, New York, or L.A. Well, these are all international stars. Like you have Tim Brooks, Tor Kamada, Ed Schmidt, Tiger Jet Singh. He's out of Toronto where he made quite a lot, many main events. And Pampiro Firpo, don't underestimate him even if you don't know him. Okay, I'll take your word for that. Put the Tokyo Joe in there, pitting Etzifier's foot to the canvas. And now finally War Eagle is fed up and he goes in and here comes big Serge Dumont. And now, Patronix is stepping on Etzifier's shoe. For a little man, Edouard Etzifier has got the biggest feet I've ever seen for a guy that small. I mean, he's not really that small, but compared to some of the other men up in that ring. Well, I think he could walk on water. <laughs> he could certainly water ski without the skis. Right. Tokyo Joe, of course, wrestles barefoot and has a tremendous sense of balance. I believe that's his Japanese training because he has done sumo and uh, a lot of other things. And by the way, I hear that next time we will appear on TV, there'll be a special bout 
Kung Fu. Do you remember that? Right. Okay, yeah. I forgot to mention that UFO and uh, Edouard Carpentier, through uh, special arrangements, are going to, uh, to wrestle or box or fight a special Kung Fu, Kung Fu, Fu round. Now, I've uh, never seen a complete demonstration of Kung Fu for real like that before. Well, uh, it's uh, the Japanese art, as you well know. And I know that Carpentier has indulged in quite a bit of uh, karate, karate and so forth, Judo and he and all knows all about that. Kung Fu is sort of uh, an accumulation of all of the martial arts, right? And it's the most deadliest of all the Japanese self-defense. Well, at the moment... By the way, I'm glad you mentioned uh, Edouard Carpentier because out there in our audience is a lady who is celebrating her 100th birthday next, next Isn't week. Isn't that astonishing? It, incredible, and she's the greatest fan of Grand Prix wrestling, and her name is Jeanette Foyer de Uville, Duville. And uh, she's in St. Benoit in uh, Two Mountains, and she loves Edouard Carpentier, and he asked us especially to pass along happy birthday greetings to her. We're more than happy to do it. Well, we're happy because when you're a century old, you know, one century, it's quite a bad span of a lifetime. I hope that she's around to watch more, watch her hero wrestle a lot more matches. And I'm sure so Edouard wishes that too. From my part, congratulations and many, many more. Okay. Well, it's been quite a day there. Uh, so far, Edouard Etzifier has been taking the brunt of all the punishment in there. It's been three against one most of the time. But I have a feeling that War Eagle, who gets very annoyed at this sort of thing, isn't going to put up. There he comes. And no sooner said than done. And if he goes on the war path, you're going to see the fur fly. There, there's the, uh, the flying ram. And we'll probably see the Coco Bonk any minute now. Well, not yet. Pato Nix isn't finished with him yet. These Goa boys, uh, they work pretty well as a team, albeit it's illegal a lot of the times. Tokyo Joe, by the way, is making his final ring appearance on television. He's got a couple of more matches around. And then he's back to Japan, and uh, he says it's for at least two years. I say he says. He doesn't speak English, but he showed me a note, and it showed his last couple of matches on it, and then it said, have a good trip. And he smiled and showed it to me, meaning that he'd be gone. And I said, for how long? And he went like this for two years. Well, we'll sure miss Tokyo Joe, because although his tactics were not always legal, he's a great athlete, and I know he's going back to his homeland where he has a very good contract there with the local promoters. Well, he sure made a name for himself fast over here. Very, very outstanding. Here comes the slam. So far, it's, there's the Tokyo drop. And again, that's one of his specialties. Whoop. Well, he just tried it once too often, and here's War Eagle. And he tags up and in from Serge Jamal to take him off the ropes. He's got him. He's got him in an upside down bear hug. There's no way out of that for him. Patronix is being pushed away. The bell goes. Well, I guess they win. Yeah, that's his punch. Submission hold. The winners are Etzifié, War Eagle, and Gumo of the first fall in this TV time limit bout. The people don't realize that it's not over yet with, and there's about five minutes left to go, and they're starting to leave the auditorium, but it's not all over yet. There's still five minutes to go. There goes the bell again. They'll soon get back to their seats. So it's one to nothing right now for the team of Serge Dumont, Edouard Etzifié, and Johnny Warrigo. Well, the people are coming back to their seats realizing <laughs> that it's not finished. They don't want to miss any part of the action here today. And we sure have plenty of it. I have never yelled so much in my life, Jack. And I hope I can last the five minutes that are left. It's got to be, let's see, uh, Tokyo Joe and Serge Dumont's, the way it finished up, that's the way it has to start. Right. Now, contact has been made. There can be a tag, and it that's can be... Right. An After contact. Right. 
Okay, I want to mention the blood donor clinic again, Jack, because it's so important. It's for such a good cause. The Grand Prix group, in association with the Canadian Red Cross Blood Donor Service, Thursday, March the 7th at the Grand Prix Gymnasium in the Show Mart on Barry Street. Don't miss it. It's going to be the big event of the year. You can meet all your favorite wrestlers. They'll be there giving blood, and I hope that you wrestling fans will turn out in great numbers because the Red Cross always needs a good supply of blood. Never better said, Jack. And I want to thank you for being uh, so helpful and telling me all the nice anecdotes that you learned while you were traveling. <laughs> well, a lot of them I can't tell on the air, of course, Jack. <laughs> However, well, this bout's got about two more minutes to go, and maybe there might be another fall to this. War Regal is attacking Tokyo, Tokyo Joe, and now comes Edifier. I'll tell you, the, oh, oh, there's a backbreaker. Back breaker on her knee. Sidearm backbreaker. Well, no. Leonix interferes. Save. There's oh, the Coco oh, Bomb. Oh, bomb. And the tag. He's dragging him away from the tag. <coughs> oh, there's a, actually there's three minutes left there, John. Well, they had a little mix up in their signals. So Dumont. says, Dumont says, if you want some, here it is. It, he looks a little bit like Gulliver in there, doesn't he? He's so big. And the others are, look small compared to him. Just like cutting down a big tree, isn't it? Here's Tokyo Joe in the corner. And Serge Jumal has got Leonix. And as good-natured as that Johnny War Eagle is when he's out of the ring, I've never seen anybody that turns into a whirling dervish so quickly when he gets mad. I think it's that Indian blood in him. When it boils, it boils. Well, well I think it's all sorted out now. Serge Jumeau gives him the big uh, big slam and the pin. Katonix interferes, and War Eagle goes over and takes care of him. Now it's a free-for-all, actually, but I think that Dumont is taking good care of... Oh, what a kick to the face of Dumont by Tokyo Joe. Something that uh, I forgot to mention, and it's very important, is we talked about the blood donor clinic on Thursday the 7th, but what brought it up was uh, Dino Brito's uh, bad luck uh, in an earlier match, and they're going to have a championship match this Tuesday the 5th at the Verdun Arena, and that's going to be uh, Bravo and Brito against Jill the Fish Poisson and Tarzan Tyler, and that's going to be one heck of a I'll match. I'll be there for sure, because the way that Gino was mad, what the, they had done before... <laughs> We've, we finally got him where we want him. <laughs> Did you see that? The brain. Not only beautiful, but the brain too. I told him, first of all, we're going to outsmart you. One way or the other, and we did it. Now we got you in the ring, Italians. And you said another thing here that's making me laugh too, is when you said about the blood, that you had plenty of blood. You know, when we get through with you, the only thing that's be coming out of you is going to be spaghetti sauce, Italian. <laughs> Nothing else but that, because you know, you know very well the lesson that I gave you myself about three or four weeks ago. And now, poor Italians. How are we going to look with the belt? Well, listen, you've had the belt with you know, another partner before. Well, they you fit, want it back, they, don't you? The belt fit me better than the, the, the Italians. I think I want the, I want the belt back. <laughs> that's going to be easy. It doesn't, that's going to be easy. We're ready. Boy. Now, wait a minute, though. They're, they're a good team. I mean, they got that belt, and they're well, a good listen, team. Well, listen, they're the champion. They're a good team. But the only reason that they're the champions is because they never got in the ring with Tyler and, and Poisson. Well, that's, that's the only I'm reason. Not, I'm not agree with you, Tarzan, there. Because I had the, I had the belt with Kira Kowalski, and that's not the Italian beat us. Sure. You don't. You didn't know that, right? I didn't know that. We, but, but I, I did, we didn't get beat. Well, wait a minute. But they stole the belt. Wait a minute. So never forget that. Wait a minute. Right? Now listen, you know, well, I'm, if we're gonna stand there, if we're gonna stand there, 
want to compare me to right. Kowalski, right. well, I'm going to tell so, you something. So we're going to beat wrong, him. Right? We're going right. to beat him. I'm right. telling you this. Okay. So let's not start I'll arguing I'll here and now. Be, we'll be argue them, right? after the match. If we get beat, then oh, we'll right. have a reason to argue. But let's not start arguing here. We've got to go out there and beat him. That's what we're going to do.